Geordie presents Brian and Roger. Brian and Roger by Dan Skinner and Harry Peacock. Hello, Brian. It's Roger here, mate. Um, I hope all is well with you. I just called to um, to let off some steam, really. I've, I've had a really angry-making, frustrating morning. Um, so there's this new guy at the benefits office, Milo, and he's a, he's a child, um, fresh out of university, and he's jumped the queue to an incredible extent. He's actually been put in charge of backlog claimants, which is a real position of power, I can't tell you. Carol, who's been there for over 10 years... Uh, she wouldn't even dream of applying for this position, let alone get the job. So, it, I mean, it's unbelievably unprecedented. And quite frankly, it's insane because he's got no idea. He has no idea whatsoever. Um, I tried to, you know, try to make him feel at home. Um, that's what's so galling. I really, really did try to make him feel at home. Introduced him to various regulars, made some light-hearted jokes about the government being rubbish and how that, you know, civil servants really run the ship. You know, just to try and put him at ease. You know, I didn't have to do it, but I did. So when I actually had an appointment with him to go over my case, he just said to me, no, nope, it's very black and white. I don't have a claim whatsoever. I nearly throw up, mate. I've been building my case for almost, what, a year uh, I was making really, really good progress with Cassandra. And, and either she's been sort of lying to me or leading me up the garden path for a year, but I can't imagine that she would because she seems like a decent person. But anyway, she's been off with um, bloody maternity leave, so I'm stuck with this Milo clown. Anyway, I didn't say anything. Just went very quiet. I nodded politely, stayed neutral. I thought, you know, don't rise. I then approached him on his lunch break outside Greg's and I just thought, no, let's chat about this man to man, you know, off the record. Brian, he told me to fuck off. Just accept it, he said. Just fuck off and accept it. I am so cheesed off. I went for a long walk and I thought that might be, that might you know, calm me down, but I just can't process this. I've got to do something. I can't, I don't know what I've got to do, but I've got to take some action. Um... Oh, mate, I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm, I'm reeling. Oh, anyway, mate, I hope you're OK. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry to mouth off, but I know you... I know you understand. OK, mate. Um, speak soon. OK, bye-bye. Hi, Roger. <clears throat> it's Brian. What a cunt. They get a 2-1 from De Montfort University and they think they're Alan Sugar. I, I grafted for years before I became an auctioneer, watching and learning. That's what these millennial shits aren't doing. And it's going to end in a big pile of arrogant shit. And they won't know what's hit them because you can't fuck an electric car, Roger. Certainly not when you're weak from, from not eating proper food like eggs or beef. <sighs> Little cunts. If I'm honest, Rog, I think you should just hit him in the face. And say, look... You little cunt. You will sign off on this or I'll fucking destroy you. I really think that's the way forward, Rog, because he'll shit himself. I'm having a fucking nightmare here, mate. The boys are going stir crazy. I mean, it, I mean, it's not as bad as living with Linda and the kids, obviously, but it, it's getting close. I was, I was in the middle of a, a very delicate Zoom meeting with some potential Polish Silk Route investors and they piled into my room and they bundled me. I'm tentatively investigating other options because it's becoming increasingly difficult to do business. You know? I just need a bit of capital. Just to... Anyway, um, good luck with that cunt, Rog. Keep me posted. All right, mate. Bye. Hello, Brian. It's Roger here. Um, mate, you're such a good friend. You really are. Um, thanks for listening to me. And, and not only sort of listening to me, but hearing me as well and understanding that, um, you know, it's, it's, it might be sort of a joke to someone else, but it's actually quite an important part uh, of my life. Um, 
you, you, I mean, you're the only one that seems interested in hearing, hearing me about it, hearing, hearing, hearing me talk about it. Anyway, um, I tried to talk to Anne, and she just sort of started whistling, and she actually turned Fraser up. Uh, she turned the volume up whilst I was talking to her, so made it very clear that I mean, I talk, I try and talk to her a lot about the benefits stuff, but so I, you know, I get it. She's sort of sick of hearing it um you know anyway um i mean you know this this backlog payment issue it's a big deal for me you know i'm in the right i'm absolutely in the right i know i am and it is very very frustrating so um you know you've got to get that out of your system somehow haven't you i've come out in hives of course because of it um so the migraines and the night sweats will follow um, obviously, because uh, that's the that's the pattern when I'm dealing with this, this sort of level of stress. So, you know, it's not just the fact that I have these thoughts in my head; it's that there are physical manifestations as well. So, I try to eat well, stay hydrated, and but you know, then I constantly need a wee. So that's stressful in itself sometimes, especially at night. Um, but thanks for your advice, mate. But I I'm not sure that I should hit Milo. Um, Apart from anything else, he's quite he's quite a bit bigger than me and younger, quite athletic. It, it would feel good for me to for me to do that, obviously. But um, the ra- the reality of me doing that and it having a positive outcome is slim, I'd say. Um, so I'm thinking more along the lines of a strongly worded letter, um, or even a Zoom meeting with the powers that be at the benefits office, and you know, really read them the riot act because. As I say, I, I'm pretty sure I'm in the right here. Um, I'm going to head to the benefits office a bit later about some other business. So, so I'll give Milo another another chance, and you know, hopefully he can be a bit more reasonable, see some sense, and we can, you know, sort this out um, rationally. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Oh, sick of it. Okay, mate. Bye bye. <coughs> <coughs> Mm. Hi, Roger. It, it's Brian. Um, so I've been in touch with some old pals from university, um, just sniffing out if anyone could let me stay at their club for a few weeks until I'm able to procure a, a, a permanent address. And I, I've had an opening with an old mate who's a solicitor, and um, uh, he said he could help us both out, actually. Um, he's putting on, um, oh, what could I call it, a... Um, a, a fancy dress party. Um, they dress up in, in period Georgian clothes and um, they watch cockfights and bare knuckle boxing. Anyway, this uh, cards, that kind of thing. Anyway, this year they're, they're, they're ramping it up a bit and they thought they'd do something a bit different. Anywho, I explained your situation and he said that that sounds perfect. Uh, could you get both parties to agree and I said, uh, if you can get me a room with an ensuite on Pall Mall where IT students don't fart on my head in the middle of the night, I'll do anything. So I've I've said you'd you'd be up for it. It's a duel. Um, so although it's quite old fashioned, it's pretty definitive and conclusive, and ultimately what you're looking for. Okay. Cheers, Rog. Speak soon. Bye. Hello, Brian. It's Roger. My God. Never in all of my 47 winters on this planet have I met anyone so obnoxious and arrogant in my life. I I despair, Brian. I absolutely despair. To think that Jamie will have to have someone like this Milo character ruling the roost, you know, as an adult. It's beyond, oh, it's beyond awful. He's just so rude. (sighs) <sighs> unkind and vegan. You see, it's just a high status, you know, looking down on everybody. He actually just refused to converse with me at all. Unbelievably, completely blanked me. I'm saying, hello, Milo, and he's just looking past me. Even Sheila, who's, it was, and she's no pushover, I can tell you that. Even she raised an eyebrow. I mean, Christ, I've been going to the benefits office for like, about five years, on and off, and I have never, ever been treated like this i am beyond formal complaints mate um or anonymous surveys the knives are the knives are out 
and look, some legal advice um, from your friend and a sit down and a parlay um, in whatever guise is no bad thing. When you said when you say dual, what what do you what do you mean by that? Um, look, I just need to let this guy know how how pissed off I actually am now because um, you know I am I am absolutely spitting nails. <sighs> anyway, um, any help now, mate Brian, will be greatly received. Oh, thanks, mate. You're there. You are always there when the chips are down. Okay, speak soon. Bye bye. Hi, Roger. Uh, it's Brian. Um, look, this is good. This is this is good to bottle this anger, Rog, um, because you, you're going to need it. So 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 Milo's up for it. Um, you know, millennials have a very little going for them, but they do seem to be up for new experiences. Anyway, that's how I um, that's how I package this. So. I see what you mean about him, though. He is—he has a very uh, superior air, which is fucking annoying. But he's in. So it's—it's it's happening this weekend in Will's country house in Wiltshire. Uh, I'm the adjudicator, so it's—it's—it's it's, uh, it's my responsibility to get both parties to the house on time and in good fettle. Uh, I'll also be master of ceremonies, so I'll march out the paces and hand you your weapon, which is a pistol. Um, it, if you don't mind, uh, Milo, uh, with logistics getting there, Milo can sit in the front of the Saburu and, um, and you can sit in the back. Uh, and uh, you both have to be blindfolded, obviously, um, and don't converse, but I'll, I'll just crank up Steve Wright's big show and, and that should cover any awkwardness. Um, oh yeah, uh, Will said that he'd happily give you some free advice after proceedings legal advice so so you know it's it, it is it is win-win all right mate cheers i'll uh, i'll see you soon brian uh, it's roger here um just a very very quick um message just to confirm that you know when you say jewel and pistols i mean we're obviously firing like blanks i mean i'm not <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna shoot him um i, I know i shouldn't i'm I don't know if I can ask, but just for my own peace of mind. Um, okay, mate. Um, yeah, let me know. Okay. Glad Milo's up for it, though. We like to sort this out. Okay, mate. Bye bye. Hi, Rog. Hello, mate. Um, yeah, no, it, it won't. It won't be uh, lead. It won't be uh, lead balls. It, it's it, it's more. Um, you know, it's sort of a highly evolved uh, evolved point scoring system which replicates a genuine historical situation. You know, <clears throat> garnering a you know a real sort of Georgian bear baity atmosphere. So, so there's n nothing there really. Um, so you know, I hope that clears that up for you, mate. And Will's very excited about it. So, yeah, it should be it should be great. All right, cheers, Rog. Bye. Hello, Brian. Um... It's Roger. Uh, yeah, that kind of um, that kind of clears it up for me. I mean, I don't really know this world, so I don't really understand, um, you know, pistols and scoring systems and stuff. So, I mean, just to clarify, that it's not. I'm not. You know, it's fake, isn't it? Um, just you know, so that I know. You know, just so that I know. Okay, mate, bye-bye. Oh, fucking hell, Rog. Just give me a break, will you, for fuck's sake. I've been living in student accommodation for four years, all right, mate? Just fucking go with this, will you? S seriously, I need a break. I just need you to play ball. It's it, it's a piece of piss, okay? It's 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 fine, and I just need you to just, just go along with it, okay? Just please. You know, Milo's all right. Milo's fine. You know, I, I, he's 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 all right. He's a he's a he's a decent lad actually. Uh, he's quite funny, I thought. But um, so please, 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 just just go with this. All right, thanks, Rog. Cheers. Bye. Hello, Brian. Uh, to Roger here. Um, mate, I'm I'm really sorry. I didn't. Um, I had no idea that you you were under, you know, that much pressure. Um, a bit selfish of me. I'm sorry. I should have thought about that maybe and and look um i don't know i mean if you think milo is all right and he's actually quite funny then you know maybe i've misjudged the situation you're a much better judge of character than me than normally um you know i can be 
I can be quite emotional, um, especially when it comes to anything around my benefits payments, because, you know, historically, that's that's quite a triggering issue for me. I, I know I can fly off the handle un, unreasonably. Um, I don't know, maybe we should just, maybe I should just go through the proper channels um, regarding the benefits and just, you know, s- stick with the process, um, try and go round Milo in that sense, um, you know, do that rather than sorting this all out in a duel at your friend's uh, Georgian cockfight party. Um, I don't know. What What do you think? Okay, mate. Bye-bye. Hello, Roger. It's Brian. Um, no, no, look, I, I think actually you're right. Uh, on further reflection, it, it appears that Milo is actually quite a major cunt. Um, I introduced him to Will and the rest of the party organisers, and they all took an immediate liking to him. Um, and my, my, my friends all brought up the fact that I, I was going to get a room at one of their clubs for organising this duel, and Milo's eyes lit up, and I, I knew immediately what he was up to. And, and sure enough, he starts angling for, for getting a room at the club himself, the little cunt. So the thing is, um, with my... Um, with my old pals uh, that I've got, if if they if they find someone they like better, they they just fling you under the bus, and 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 I will not let that happen to me, Rog. Okay, so I I personally think a duel with Milo is the perfect solution uh, for both of us, um, and 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 really you just need to better him, and they'll lose respect for him. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, but you have to win, though, Rog. Uh, we, we we can't take any chances. Milo must be uh, humiliated, <clears throat> removed. All right, mate. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Cheers, Rog. Bye. Hello, Brian. Uh, it's Roger here. Um, look, mate, I know that I'm probably not meant to call you uh, now as as you're the referee, so to speak, and I know that you're, you're neutral, but um, I'm just... I'm just wondering what's going on because um, I can hear the party downstairs, um, but I'm locked in this room, and um, I'm sorry, but I had to take my blindfold off because I was getting very hot, and, and now I'm just staring at this shrine to David Gower, um, photographs of him, candles on his face, and I'm just—it's just me and two pumped-up cockerels in separate cages. Um, here in the room. I just wonder what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I'm guessing Milo is in a different room, somewhere in the somewhere in the house. Um, it was very tense in the car, wasn't it, mate? Look, Brian, I'm, I'm very, very thankful for you, you know, for putting this together. But I'm I'm really nervous, Brian, and, I, and I'm not sure that I want to go through with this. Milo's. You know, he's obviously going places and he'll leave my benefits office you know, eventually and, and I might get lucky with whoever takes over. So so maybe this isn't the right way to go about things. Oh, hello? Oh, no, I'll take the off. Look, I've got very hot. Okay, mate, you're on. Get the phone off my phone. All right. Let's go. Okay. Come on, let's go. It's fine to do the Let's go. Hello, Brian, it's Roger. Um... I don't know where I am, and I'm trying very hard to piece together what happened. Um, I remember the gun going off, and Milo's head rocking back, and then, and then hitting, hitting the ground. And I remember seeing the child in him, and I remember everybody laughing. I've never been in an environment like that before, Brian seems so cruel and unforgiving. I'm sure Piers Morgan was there, wasn't he? To think that he witnessed what happened and then went straight to his morning show on GMTV to talk about childhood or obesity or, or whatever. I mean, so detached, but some serious stamina. It was so dreamlike, all the masks and candlelight and dwarves serving drinks. I remember feeling very sorry for them. I think I'm horribly in shock, Brian. I, uh, I shot Milo, didn't I? 
He's gone, isn't he? And then I was taken away as people were laughing. I got an anonymous phone call to say my backlog benefits payment had been approved and I'd be receiving a cheque of £6,375.23. and pence. So that's far too much money. But I don't know who to ring back because, as I say, the call was anonymous. And when I asked which department they were from, they told me not to worry about that and just to keep my mouth shut. Can you give me a call, Brian, please? I'm not entirely sure where I am, but I feel heavily medicated. I remember being boarded onto a military plane and... And there's a view of a massive lake on the balcony here, and I'm definitely not in England. And they strap me to the bed of an evening. I'm a bit concerned, mate, so if you could just give me a call. Okay, thanks, mate. Hope you're well. Bye-bye. Brian and Roger is produced by Mark Haynes and Joel Morris for Great Big Owl and is now a member of Aldi's family of shows. If you're enjoying this show from Aldi, you might also like Cold Case Crime Cuts. Download from your favourite podcast provider now.